Bonjour, good morning, and welcome to the same old Arsenal podcast. And hello to those that are top of the league. We welcome you. Hello, sorry, I can't say. We welcome you back to the post game breakfast show on the same old Arsenal podcast. Well, what a lovely morning it is, isn't it? I'm dressed in our away top. Albert's got a bit of uh, yellow on as well. And there's Chris. <laughs> Cheers. I'm in a good mood, everyone. Welcome to the show. Right, today with me, um, my podcast brother, the other one. Hello, Christopher. How are you doing? You all right? Very good. Very good. Can How I, can we can not I, be? This is going to be an overwhelmingly positive podcast, but I've got to say something. I still don't like that away kit. That's the only negative I'm just going to say. I still can't get on with that away kit. You Last insulting. season's black kit deserved to win a title. Well, I've one, got that as well, funny enough. So, the funny thing is about this, and I don't know if I've told you this story about 23 times. Hello, Albert, by the way. Welcome to the show. While we discussed the away top, was I hated this away top. Uh, For the first week it came out, I was like, what is this? I saw someone wearing it in August in my local shopping centre. And I thought, I'm going to go up. I had a word of him and his girlfriend, had a little feel of it and loved it. And then I went and got it. And actually, a client bought it for me. Sorry, I do lie. A client bought it for me um, to say thank you for a transaction that we got through. And on the back of it, I think this one's got Erdegaard. The red one's got rice because another client bought it for me. And I've got the black one from last year. But funny enough, I haven't had a kit for about 40 years. I've got all the great tops. I love it. Come on. Come on. We're doing so well in it, aren't we, Albert? We are. You know, that kit actually look, it looks a lot better. In the flesh and the it when I saw it firstly on the um when it first came out. But yeah, listen, man. I, I I've seen some I've seen some of the potential drops for next season, Amanda. What are you waiting for them to come out? Trust me. Oh, okay. <laughs> no more. I've got three. Listen, I, I don't <laughs> I've got enough. But anyway, welcome to everyone. And this is what I love, Chris. I'm just gonna put this comment up. The fact that Angela says, yeah, love a breakfast show. It's great time in Australia. So we are reaching the globe of gooners, which is fabulous. The American ones are probably asleep and the Australian ones are awake. We cater for everybody here. So welcome to the show. My God, we're all happy, aren't we? Come on. I think so, Amanda. Boys, smile. We are all happy. It is amazing. (laughs) I'm just massively hungover because I just couldn't... (laughs) Yesterday, honestly, I started having a beverage. I didn't start drinking until about beverage. five o'clock, so I was just so nervous. Yeah. But I don't know about you guys, but honestly, I, at nine o'clock last night, I was walking through my house, just randomly talking, to, muttering to myself, going, get in there, get in there. I'll do that all the time. <laughs> brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. I loved it. Um, you have uh, it, you have been remiss, Amanda, by not mentioning uh, a few of the shout-outs, because we've got some predictions. Oh, yes. Up, and also, I, I, you know sponsored what it is? by the wonderful Ruth I know. Beckler. I'm all excited, and I was coming into my professionalism part now. We are Spencer. Oh, do you know, I haven't even put the little banner up. That's how how excited I got this morning. See the banner below? We are sponsored by Ruth Beckart, and we're going to show you some pictures later um, of what she actually does, and it's amazing. Honestly, I'm all over the place because I'm very, very excited. Um, So, for everybody, listen, ask us questions. Chris is going to store them because he's my admin boy today. And um, we're going (laughs) to. We're going to uh, store them for later and ask them out. And I'm going to do the shout outs in a moment. Albert, welcome to the show, darling. You deserve a proper introduction. Welcome back to my post game podcast brother for last season, really, weren't you? I was, man. It's good to be back. I like the morning shows. You're right. Um, I think in Australia, it depends. I think they're like 11 hours ahead of us. Yeah. Flipping old man. It's not their breakfast, but at no, least no, they're up not. walking. Yeah, but no, um, yeah, great to be on, especially after that game. Um, oh, looking forward to that Brighton away game. I, I don't know why, I just was. Um, I thought I said I was about seventy percent confident Arsenal would win. I was right. No, listen, we we'll get into it, right? So what I did yesterday, um, the same old Arsenal and myself, we asked for the predictions, and if anyone got a prediction right, they were going to get a shout out. Well. Four of you did. Three nil straight out. So well done, Helda at Helda J R Dias. Jordan at J underscore Parrot04. Valerie at Inspiration VC. Mark Taylor at Mark8 underscore AFC. Well done, all of you. Three nil. Well, actually, nil three, but you know what I mean. Three nil to the Arsenal. I 
we didn't predict because we predicted for we didn't do a preview show to this one, but I predicted two one for Luton and it was two 0 But James Cook again with his prediction right. You all need to go and rub his arm and get the lottery numbers. He said nil nil against City and he said two nil against Luton. So doing all right with the predictions. Right, let's get started. Listen, I mean, I, I don't. I, I've got look at all my notes. Look at this. All this to get through. Are you, are you ready, boys? You ready? Do it. So we have the most amazing song at the Arsenal, don't we? It's called Wacker Wacker, and it's for our it's for our guy Kai Havertz. Now, I'm just I'm going to leave the floor for Chris in a second, but I'm just going to say one thing. Whenever a player joins us and people throw their toys out, I always say the same thing: give them a chance, let them bed in. Let them have a chance of playing under Mikel with our wonderful team. But so many of you didn't. And at the beginning of the season, and I'm not going to be disingenuous and say I thought he was going to turn out like this. I just thought, give him a chance. He could give us something that we haven't got. Now, he is just turning into someone so important for our team that I think we're going to hand over to Chris right now. Because, Chris, you've got a few little things that you want to say, don't you, and own up to. Yeah. Hi, um, hi. my name's Chris. I uh, am formally acknowledging the uh, Kai Havertz apology tour is now underway. Um, tickets are available at all good merchandising outlets because that, that lad is delivering the sauce. He has now um, surpassed any season in the Premier League in terms of goals and assists contributions. He's got 14 this season. His best ever. So some stats. Last season, 10 goals and assists for Chelsea. In 2022 season, 12 goals and assists. Uh, 2021, nine goals and assists. The 2020 season, he was uh, in the Bundesliga and he got 18 goals and assists. He's only got to get four more goal contributions and he's leveled his uh his his outstanding season that he had for Leverkusen and the way that he's playing at the moment I feel like he's going to do it but genuinely I'm looking at it at the moment if he's got 14 he's actually got 15 in all competitions he's going to hit 20 goal contributions this season and I think we have to ha- hold our hands well I have to hold my hands up and say I didn't expect it I looked at the numbers at the beginning of the season I said why are we signing a guy who plays up front and doesn't score goals Arteta's played him as a as a left eight for a big chunk of the season. So he's, he's he's scoring goals. He scored goals where half the season he's been doing it from left eight, but he's playing up top at the moment. He is a target man. He is delivering the goods and we look like a better team with him in it. So uh, I would like to formally acknowledge that I was wrong and I would like to hand over to Albert. Did you, or how did you feel, mate, about Havertz beginning of the season? Are you on the apology oh. tour train with me? Um, no, I'm, I'm not going to apologise. I, I, I was quite... Um... What did I say about him? Obviously, I think most Arsenal fans thought at the time when we bought him, they're like, mm, I don't know what, what, what's what's happening here. This is not the signing that we thought he was going to get at Arsenal, to be fair. Um, and I get why it was tarnished or why people were negative about it, because obviously, not even a Chelsea, partly the Chelsea thing, but just what they've seen in the Chelsea shirt in his time in England. So, And they're probably looking at Arsenal thinking, you know what, we had the season we had last season, fell a little bit short, we need to kick on. Is this the guy that's going to help us take us to the promised land? But I think um, I was on board in the sense of what will keep Arsenal fans quiet about him and, and will probably get him a little bit on side. It was just a simple answer was goals elevate your game. It, it, it's as simple as that. People have fantastic attributes as a player, but sometimes... They know they don't hit the score sheet or they don't get enough goals, but he's done that, and they're not just that he's got important goals. Um, the one yesterday, because the two 0 was the, it was really really there, and, and he got that goal and um, the important goal against um, Brentford at home, Brentford away. Um, he scored against Luton at a critical time. Um, he, he gets us he gets us breathing space in terms of dropping into that sort of midfield area, breaking up play, winning cheap free kicks. Um, the Chelsea fans are spewing, man. I was just trolling through YouTube yesterday, man. A couple of well-known Chelsea fans. They just, they're like, oh, this is a, this, this hasn't gone how I thought it would go when he left off. Um, and you know what? He's been brilliant. Um, goals, assists, 
Um, and most importantly, if I finish up, he gives us a physical presence and he gives us a focal point as well, which we've not had at Arsenal for a long, long time. Right, you two. So you've sort of apologised. Um, well, Albert didn't. He didn't need no, to. I but he needs I, to. And I am not, holding my hands up. And <laughs> I would say not most Arsenal fans, because obviously we see a lot on social media and just the people we know. But generally the people I was speaking to were saying, look, maybe you can bring us something. Not everyone's on social media. Yes, there was quite a few that weren't happy. And But what I remember back was wasn't his first goal a penalty away from home yep, yeah Bournemouth. Bournemouth. right and what I noticed was the team were desperate for him to score so for me the team unity was already there and I was like they really love these habits I wonder what he's going to bring us you know they must see something because a lot of people are not happy you know he wasn't really doing it and I'm not going to sit here and go I could see from day one but I thought there must be something because they gave him the ball to score a penalty and they wanted, they, you know, you could see that, that, that they had love for him. Then obviously the song is the best song on the planet. It is just the best song. I was talking to um, the celebration police on Twitter. I just love that account. I was saying to him, I just want him to score so we can sing the song. I mean, it is just an amazing song. Whoever thought of that, absolute legends. But jumping from that, I just want to talk about Raya. So I hold my hands up to Raya because not that I thought he was bad. I never understood why he came in for months on end. I, I wouldn't slag him off, but I was like, but Ramsdale's OK. You know, why has he changed it? I, I don't really understand. And again, in Mikel, we should just trust, which I generally do. Um, Raya is just proving to be what, and you know, my other half, Carl, who's in the chat room, continuously said to me at the beginning he's been brought in for the small margins that Ramsdale let go just the small margins and I was like oh, I never had a problem with Ramsdale I thought every, you know everything was fine but Chris can you see now why Raya was brought in and I mean I understand most of us felt like that on the uh, Ramsdale thing but yeah yeah, absolutely. So um, the two moments of the game yesterday that I think stand out for me, I think the first one was, in, they're, they're both in the first half, um, there was a ball which didn't really come to anything, but Brighton were pressing us quite high and Gray had the ball at his feet um, and he played a ball just pretty vertical through the centre, I think, to Erdegaard. Um, and Erdegaard then sprayed out wide and, you know, it was an attack that then eventually broke down. But I, I said out loud to myself, I was like, that's a good pass, Raya, because I'm sitting there watching it from the, the vantage point view. And yeah. I didn't even see the pass that he was going to make. Um, so the fact that he's been able to see it whilst down at that eye level, it really does show that difference, you know, verticality in line breaking passes from a goalkeeper. That's the sort of stuff that we want to see. The second one, I think everyone will probably be reminded of was just before half time. That save that he made uh, where he's just tipped the ball wide. I think that was really, really important because we don't, as we know, as we know, we can go through the stats as well from yesterday or from this season. We don't concede a lot of chances. So it's always felt a little bit like I've always felt like, yeah, good ball distribution meets feet. But what happens in terms of shot saving and, you know, those big saves that are, those big sort of palm saves that we saw we've seen Ramsdale make before? And we haven't seen that from Raya. Not really enough. There's been one or two. So can he still do it? And what he showed yesterday with that save is that, yes, he can have nothing to do for the vast majority of the game other than the ball at his feet. But when it's when when the important moment comes, when the crunch moment comes, he can make that save and he can keep us in games. Because if he's just a guy that's good good with the ball at his feet, great. But if he's not going to be able to do those those kind of that type of saves, it's it's what uh that horrible person John Terry used to say about Pe Petr Cech, like he can save you X number of points a season. If if Raya can keep delivery on saves like yeah. that, it feels like the same sort of thing. Yeah, and I'm just going to bring this up, Albert, and you can answer this. I think Rambo shot himself in the foot when he admitted he couldn't concentrate for the 90 minutes of the game. And I personally think that interview was the beginning of the end. You really can't admit that, you know, in, in a situation where we are trying to win leagues and a few points in it. And it could have made all the difference. Thanks, Angela T, for your uh, comment. I agree. Let me come in. Yeah, um, I, it, I can't remember when that when that actually. I, I remember what I, know, I remember watching the program, but I can't remember when that clip was specifically 
put out. But listen, um, Mikel's been a fan of David Rare for quite right. a long time. Yeah. Um, so that that wasn't a secret. Um, I know people have got a, a you know a, a liking and a, a sort of an affinity with Aaron Ramsdale, but um, sometimes the sentiment that kills you. And Chris mentioned it, and you know. If if Mikel feels that David Rea could bring that extra two, yeah, three percent, um, then that's what he'll do. Um, David Rea's a good goalkeeper, man. Like uh, his time at Brentford, he, he, you know, he was. Um, if you if you're a stats person, um, very 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 good in it. In it, you know, Brentford are a good side, but then they're, they're not Arsenal. Um, and of course, he's going to be nervous coming to Arsenal Football Club, and with with the furore that came around it, and you got. You know, ex goalkeepers coming about, it's all talking about, oh, they wouldn't like it and like this. So there was massive pressure coming to Arsenal Football Club. That's going to be the case for anyone that comes here, but particularly a position where um, it's quite a unique position. And also, just to finish up, um, I kind of looked at it from the point of view that, I mean, there's a fantastic goalkeeper, Real Madrid, um, Courtois, who was out for the season. Could you imagine that happened at Arsenal if, if, uh, if, if say, if, um, if Ramsdale got an ACL? And we've got a backup in terms of Runison or Carl Heim. We Arsenal fans have been having kittens. So I understood Mikel's logic behind it to say, like, you know what? If we lose a top goalkeeper, basically our second replacement isn't going to be any good for the majority of the season. It could happen. Yeah, that, I know we're talking in hyper hypotheticals, but um I I actually I was actually I could see why we, we brought him in, whether Arsenal fans have agreed that or not. Um and for me. Yeah, the whole announcement video, I thought, you know what, he's going to be Arsenal number one. And Ramsdale's mm. going to be edged out of the team. And, it, that's, and that's what's happened. But listen, he's been excellent. Chris made a good point. Um, he didn't have much to do in terms of being worked, whether that be in terms of the defence in front of him. But I thought it might be enough of a Porto moment in the first leg when the guys cut inside. But listen, when you're called upon, you've got to do your job. But listen, five clean sheets away, what, in the Premier League for the first time since 1997? What can I say? What can I say? Yeah, I, I'm not going to get to the stats in a moment. So let, let's just start at the beginning of the game. Um, you said you were confident, Albert. I don't I, I don't think I'm confident at all. I'm absolutely plutzing before every game now. Everyone's a cup final. What, we're down to eight now? <laughs> God, it's like, this is the business end of the season, Chris. We're all stressed. It's like, it, it's so bizarre how you watch the live game and you're just all over the place. But then you go and watch Match of the Day and you're relaxed and you see it in a different manner. You can enjoy it. It's not a bad enjoyment at the moment in a weird way. Um, I think everyone will understand that who's been going to football for quite a while, that it's now it's so stressful, you know, but it's wonderful. But we're in this position because we'd rather be in this position than any, you know, Spurs or anyone like even United or anything like that. This is what we want. This is it. We've just had the most incredible season. And we were saying off air, Chris, that this is the best football we've seen since the Invincibles. This is even so much better than last year. It really is because the pressure was on because we did what we did last year for this season. And yet here we are. And the international break in January did us a massive favour. Off to Dubai. Since we've been to Dubai... I think we've scored 38 goals in the Premier League. Hold on. We've conceded four. This is not Arsenal like we've known it over the years, is it, Chris? Oh, absolutely not. I mean, it's an absolutely... This is fantastic stuff. Yeah. Let's let's have this right. This was not going to... I didn't think this was going to be a very easy game at all yesterday. Like, Brighton have lost one game at home all yeah. season. Uh, and that was right towards the beginning of the season. That was West Ham. And even that was like a sucker punch. That was West Ham hitting them on the counter. They've picked up draws uh, uh, at home to um, Liverpool. They've beaten the scum. Um, you know, this is a good Brighton team. They have... Um, they haven't lost since August, I think it was. And I'll be honest, I said beforehand... I think one goal, I think this is going to have to be one of those games where we just rely on our back line and it will be one goal in it. But every week I underestimate how good this Arsenal team are and every week they provide answers that just make me feel comfortable, feel happy. I'm still not, I still think that our fixture list is really, really difficult. So I think it's going to be tough for us to go all the way. But as some people have said in the chat, like, you're getting eight, I'm getting 98 vibes, like 1998 vibes too, because we're just on this kind of winning run at the moment, and we're just we we are 
miserly at the back. We don't give away anything. It's a it's such an impressive uh, squad that Arteta has built. It's it's amazing. And 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 also um, what I'm loving more, and I've always said this, I like to be in the chasing pack. I am generally happy where we are. Last year we were not there. We were we were above, and everyone was waiting for us to fall, which happened because of injuries and other reasons. We're there. We are there, and it's going to be the most exciting running because there are three teams, and it's going to constantly go like this, the league. Whoever plays first will go top, and then, you know, it changes again. We'll obviously, you know, we're going to talk about Liverpool, United, uh, United Liverpool later, but it's just an amazing feeling, and, uh, and, and a massive, massive shout-out to our away fans yesterday. We could not hear the Brighton fans through our TV, boys. That's all I'm going to say. Boys and girls, you did us proud. Absolutely the whole way through. Absolutely fantastic. And you have got a lot to sing about. We really, really do. Um, So let's just start off at the beginning. Um, Albert, Zinni instead of Kivior. I felt a little bit sorry for Kivior, but then I was thinking maybe he's rotating for Bayern because he has to rotate. Surely Zinni... Albert's not going to play against Bayern Munich. No, I, I don't think he will. Um, I know that I don't think he will after that. I think that was a little bit of a surprise. Um, was it a surprise to see Zinchenko play against Brighton away? Um, you saw what they, most teams will do this anyway in terms of trying to isolate yeah. Zinchenko. That happened quite a bit yesterday. But only the guy that was down there right outside the Dingra, I think it is, um, is a bit wasteful. But um, I think at this stage of the season, Amanda. In terms of like team lineups, you're not going to see drastic changes. You might see the odd one or two. Um, you can toss a coin up between, you know, Jesus starting or Zinchenko maybe starting, but it's not going to be, I don't think they're going to be major talking points because um, we've got a lot of players back fit now and coming back. So that's good. But um, Zinchenko was, he was okay yesterday. Um, I think for me, it's, it's it's not so much of him. We know defensively he's not really that great, if I'm going to be honest. Um, but it's the fact he makes poor mistakes when he's in possession, which is his strength, which is actually his, his strong point of his game. But um, listen, I think Kivior or Tommy will probably come back in on Tuesday. I'd be shocked if they're not Amanda. Uh, one or the two. Maybe Kivior, probably. Um, but I actually, of course, calling for the change a little bit sooner for Zinchenko to come off. Um, nothing personal. I just thought tying it up a little bit. But um yeah, no, no, no major shocks of the lineup, but it's a bit tough on Kivio, but listen, he's he's done enough to the fact we're even having the conversation, Amanda. About yeah, Yako exactly. Kiv- about Yako Kivio <laughs> not being in the team. He, he's done well, man. He's coming, he's done really well to be playing at left back when he's not a left back. Um but you know, with mod- 21st day, 21st century modern day football, these footballers are they're multifaceted, man. So um yeah, listen, it's not a massive, massive concern, purely because Tommy's back as well. Yeah, and it's lovely, isn't it, Chris, that we've got this one, you know, you look at the bench and you go, wow, you know, and Arteta alluded to it yesterday in his post-match chat with Sky. When he was on the pitch, I don't know if you both saw this, but he was saying, they said, what's different this season? And, and he sort of brushed over it, but he said, everyone's fit, and then he moved on. And that was massive last year. Could you, mm. I'm, I'm not going to say, I'm touching wood, I promise everybody, touching wood. Imagine if Saliba or Gabriel, I mean, I actually don't even want to go there and put it in the universe. But the, the defensive back four is, it, I mean, Saliba and Gabriel, I, I'm, we could wax lyrical about all of the players at the moment, but especially Saliba and Gabriel. I was on LinkedIn the other day with an Arsenal something. I don't know if he works at Arsenal or whatever it was. I was having a, um, sorry, an ex-footballer, an ex-footballer, nothing to do with Arsenal. And he was saying, are Gabriel and Saliba the best partnership the Premier League has ever seen? Now, I didn't see the last bit. I thought he meant this season. <laughs> so I went storming in and went, you will only hear that from Arsenal fans, that they are the best partnership. I didn't realise he meant the whole of the Premier League. Of course, then they were talking about John Terry, and then there was other, you know, Sol Campbell and all that. But they're up there, aren't they, Chris? They definitely are. I think longevity needs to be demonstrated and yeah. probably title-winning side. If we are talking about Arsenal that have won three out of four titles or something in the next five years, then you probably say, yeah, they've, they've got to be in the, comp- in the equation. Um, 
to your point on the on the substitutions, uh, so the bench yesterday was um, we had Martinelli, we had Enketia, Tomiasso, Trossard, uh, Vieira. Um, you know, it's 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 a strong lineup. But if you look back, uh, yeah, I'll touch wood as well because Gabriel and Saliba have been fit and that's been massive. But if something were to happen to one of them, we're not putting Rob Holding in for six or seven games. We've got quality players like Tommy Asu is a massive upgrade in terms of his quality at playing centre half um, instead of holding. I think Kivior again would come in and do a really, really good job. You've got Ben White who could come in and play that sort of role, and then you move Tommy Asu to right. So he's got Arteta's got so many different options now that. We are in a really good place. The squad depth is good and every single player is stepping up. And you can also tell that they're all desperate to play. Like they're, they're all motivated. This isn't, you know, this isn't like Man United with Mark, Marcus Rashford just jogging around at Stamford Bridge and not pressing. Every single one of these players wants to be on the pitch as, as much as they possibly can. It's amazing to see. The depth is great. And, you know, you can't say, I can't say any more higher praise than, than what we've been saying, which is this team looks the best football team right now, the way that they're playing, it looks the best football team since we went the entire season unbeaten 20 years ago. That's amazing. 20 years ago. Um, I think we should just talk about the goals and then go to questions. We've got so many and it's going to cover it. Listen, I I didn't need to see a, a VAR replay of Jesus's penalty shout it was a stonewall penalty for me he slightly got the ball but that's not the point anyway he took jesus leg out took him out wasn't even he didn't even do one of his dives or anything he just literally fell to the ground and it was a goal scoring opportunity it's a penalty but when it went to var albert that's fine and it has to go to var i know that but it went on a bit longer than i thought it was going to go i thought instant it would just be given and i was like are they serious I, I swear, if they don't give this penalty, I am, I'm done. I would be like, I would want to throw something at the TV. But for for you, Albert, penalty or not? No, it's a penalty, man. It was. Yeah. He, no, no Arsenal fan disputed he got a touch of the ball. But if you look at his, the, the trajectory the ball went, it's definitely a penalty. He completely wiped him out after he got the, the touch of the ball. Um, I'd have been shocked if they had overturned that because the on-field decision was given was a penalty. The only time I saw... Where we got a penalty and it got overturned was Anthony Taylor at the Emirates. We played United. Um, when he gave oh, us yeah. penalty for a half year and that got overturned, but I didn't think it'd be overturned and it, and it was rightly given as a penalty. Um, to be honest, Amanda, we should have been a goal up before that in the first. Oh, minute. I mean, first About three minutes. Yeah, we should. I mean, Gabriel should have had that on target oh, yeah, within what a minute or two minutes. Then there was another one, but you know what? It, it was one of those things that the longer it went on, the more frustrating it was going to get, Chris. So we go, you know, Saka takes a penalty. And I, let me just talk about Saka's stats for a second because Cole sent us something and I just want to read this out. 39 appearances, 17 goals, 13 assists. So in his 39 appearances, he's had 30 contributions towards a goal. For yeah. a player that has been quiet this season... <laughs> Chris, come on. I mean... Oh, he's he's young... absolutely star boy. He's if he absolute... doesn't win Young Player of the Year, there's no justice. Ooh, I, don't know I mean, he's our... It uh, is Albert, a tough please. Category. Yeah, it's a tough category. Go on, Albert. Go on, Albert. Don't tell me Foden. No, no, I'm, I'm talking generally in terms of the players that... There's probably three obvious ones. Obviously, it'd be, it'd be Saka, Foden and um, uh, Cole Palmer. But um, there's a couple... Maybe, maybe a couple of others I missed as well, but... I, 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 don't see think, their stats. I don't think it's clear cut then. <laughs> go on, Chris. Go on. Go on. Well, Saka, I mean, it, it, he is he's by far and away our most productive player. Um, people used to say this about, again, apologies for invoking horrible named uh, other players, but um, Harry Kane. Uh, people used to say that about Kane. He used to be slow to get started. I just think he, Saka's like that. He gets, a, a, he needs a little bit of time to get into his rhythm. But as soon as you normally hit September, October, he's banging in the goals and assists. He's doing it again. Uh, as you said, it's 30 goals in 30 goal contributions in 39 games. It's also in the Premier League specifically, it's 14 in 29 Premier League games. Absolute. He's just brilliant. He's just, he's, uh, he is our best player. He's one of the best players in the league. Just on the actual penalty, though, I wasn't too worried about the VAR decision. And the reason why is like sometimes, you know, the commentary, sometimes 
they kind of you can tell when they when the commentators kind of talk it up or talk it down like all oh, this could be reviewed and they didn't really seem to be doing it because I think the commentators often get like little words in their ears from the producers I think they get a little bit more access to like what's happening with the VAR stuff and so you can often tell are they going to give this and both Alan Smith and whoever the other um uh, commentator was um on the evening were both sort of saying yeah no it'll be given because I so I was pretty fine about it but you know as as Albert said we should have been we should have been at two three goals up before that because as you said there was the Gabriel header um Saka cut inside and just put the ball wide you had mm. Kai Havertz nicking the ball off Lewis Dunk and then Gabriel Jesus as well forced a really really good save from uh for Bruggen so Chris just go back to that Saka one yeah. as soon as he cut in and he took the shot. I was up because yeah, it's his normal. It it's his normal goal, isn't it? It's his normal. Yeah. Harry, it, and he was wide, and I was so yeah. shocked. I Amanda, was like, Amanda is interesting because um, that the first eight, the first eight ten minutes we were poor. I thought we gave her the ball poorly. Um, mm. They started really really well. They beat our press well, but from the sort of from the Saka missed shot, I, I think we completely dominated dominated yeah, the game yeah. completely. Um, we had yeah. opportunity after opportunity. We got in behind. I think on another day, Gabriel, our centre half, could have had a hat trick. He won about he won about four or five headers uh, in the box. I mean, mm. I'm going to get to the something about Gabriel later, but <laughs> I mean, it's coming from everywhere. I mean, how we can't even talk about Ben White? I mean, oh, man. Uh, the man is just uh, another one who came back from the international break and has just been absolutely awesome. You know, it was it was interesting. You know, like. Obviously, City fans, uh, neutral fans have had a go at us for getting a point at City um, when other teams this week have now been trounced. Apparently, that's what we should have done. Gone there and played. However, um, that's been going on all week on my social media with my Arsenal friends and my City friends, which has been quite interesting. Um, I, I just think to myself, this team... It, it, there, there's something there that's right, that's clicked. It will not be the fact that we did not go to the Etihad and get two points if we lose this league, if we don't win it. It will be Fulham, it will be West Ham between Christmas and New Year. Those were the two games we did not turn up in. And it will be a shame, but, you know, there's there's still quite a bit of football to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just not confident because... Liverpool aren't even playing brilliantly and they're winning games and Why they're are you running. Not Amanda? Why? I'm not com- I'm, I'm not saying we will lose a game. I, I mean, listen, I predicted we'd win five out of five and we did. Uh, Amanda, you know what's in... mad? You know what's mad? Like, you know, they talk about like. But they're the not fix- playing well, well, but and they're winning no, games and no, that's no, no, the sign no, of. No, you know what it is? It's, you know what's funny? It's like they talk about the games that are left. And it's like, oh, I've still got the most. I'm like, hold on a minute. Hold on, hold on. I looked at the fixtures. Liverpool got some tricky away games, you know. Well, they got Villa away and they got Everton away. Right, Everton are no, no. quite good. They don't beat they they've Everton some, don't beat them away. Amanda, uh, Everton don't tricky, beat them at Goodison. They've got some uh, tricky away games. Villa exactly. is not hard away for Liverpool. Right. Anyway, I don't I don't want to put a downer on. Um, I just feel like I'm going to say it now that if we don't win it, it's not going to be down to the Etihad. It's going to be down to those two games that unfortunately we were. It weren't great, was it? Anyway, no, no, sorry. So I just want to give a big shout out to Ben White, to the whole of our back four, David Raya. Now let's move into midfield a little bit because Jorginho, I I mean, another one that I think many people owe an apology to as well. Another one who's settled in. Another one who's got experience of winning Champions Leagues and Leagues. Another one who is just dominating and allowing Declan Rice to move forward. And another one who's from Chelsea. So thanks, Chelsea, for Havertz and Jorginho. Um, and I'd, and someone actually put, would you give Jorginho another contract for another couple of years? And I would. Would you, Albert? Uh, there was a rumour that he would uh, talk, uh, talk about uh, like a year extension. Um, I don't know how concrete that was. That was a, that, would that mean January maybe? Possibly. Um, but yeah, you know what? I would, from what I've seen in his time in an Arsenal shirt, I mean, let me make that very clear. Not just what I've seen this season. Um, the extra year, yeah. I, that that that's who. I, th- this is the, this is the thing. With someone like him, you would give the extra year too. I think there's been too many times where we've had players at the club where we've given them extensions, and really we should have moved them on, Amanda. But 
I think with him, you can have that conversation and say, you know what? Yeah, he's play, he's put in some performances. Experienced, he's a winner. Um, he brings something to the team, like the composure and the calmness, and and he can pass the ball as well, man. You can really pass. I think Mikel Arteta after the game yesterday, he said, I don't know what he was doing up there when he set up the second goal. Um, oh, I love that. But, but sometimes footballers need to do that, Amanda. Like, you know, you've got space to run into. You can give the extra man, and if he doesn't make that run, and he was literally level when they did the camera still, literally level, perfect. Yeah. Um, and he makes it, he sets up the goal for Havertz to, to 2 0. But I would give him the extra year personally, because I think there's other players you can move on who haven't, who are not anywhere near him in terms of experience and, and quality. Because he could move into the coaching side as well. I think he's yeah, that, got that. definitely coming. <laughs> yeah, that mentality. But, I yeah. mean, listen, we should call this the same old Arsenal Declan Rice show because every single podcast we've done since the beginning of the season, we must be raving about this boy. And Gentile 1969 says, half-price Rice. What value is on him now, Chris? Oh, well, he's, a, he's at least 150, 200 million pound footballer, isn't he? He's, he's essentially, if you think about the way in which the solidity that we've got from our uh, defence this season, it Rice is a big part of that. Like we talked about Saliba and Gabriel staying fit, but Rice actually is a big part of that. Um, and Gentile actually also one of the questions we might as well, is this a multi-title winning defence? It does feel like it at the moment. Like I'm not going to say we are going to win the league, but you're looking at that back line with Declan Rice in front of it. And we just don't, we don't concede chances. Uh, we give nothing away. Um, the availability as well is a really, really important thing. And again, kind of linked to that, Joe said in the comments, does part of a future. This is kind of linked to the Jorginho chat and contract mm. as well. Like, party isn't fit. And so when you've got someone like Rice who is fit, and when we've got when we're playing like we're playing, you do wonder whether or not Party does have a future for us. Albert, what do you reckon with Party? Um, just listen, as a fellow African brother, I love Thomas, but I think <laughs> I think I think personally, I've said it before. Um, no doubt in his ability, but I think after this season, I I don't think he'll be here personally. No, nor do I. Mm. No. no. But it's, it's quickly, been... so quickly, so quickly, so I'm just. Two seconds about Benjamin White. Benjamin, Tom. particularly in that first half against City last week, I thought he was excellent. I thought he stood out massively. Um, little turn in the week against Luton, little Cruyff turn, whatever he'd done. He's just brilliant. He's, he, I look at him yesterday and I thought, you know what? You have, Your levels have just gone up tenfold. Yeah. Not that they wasn't great before, but they're, they're, there's a with our defence, generally speaking, quickly, like they just... There's a trust there, man, as an Arsenal fan. We're not having kittens anymore. As Arsenal fans, when we go away from home, particularly. Um, it's, it's brilliant, brilliant to see. George Graham would have been proud, man. Oh, I was just about to say, this is like a George Graham defence. This is yes. this is where we never worried in the 80s with George Graham's defence. But we've not had that. We had Sol Campbell come in and we did have some decent defenders, but nothing like this. This no. this is like the 80s all That's over right. again with Tony yeah. Adams, Steve Bold, Keown Dixon. This is this is it. And and it makes my heart, honestly, <laughs> makes my heart so strong and love for these boys. And then we move forward to, I mean, Erdegaard and Saka and and the way, and I wanted to talk about this as well. Often when I'm sitting at the Emirates or I'm watching the game on TV, I think, come on, Mikael, bring a sub on. Change it now, change it now. Lately, he's doing it. I'll say it and he does it. And I'm like, I love, it's like we've got super subs. I mean, did I see Leandro Trossard coming on and doing what he did? No, I didn't. When he came on, I thought, oh, it's a good move. Yeah, you know, got to rotate, got to keep fresh legs. We got Bayern on Tuesday, which we'll get to as we we keep saying, and we need to move on because it's like this show has gone so quick. Um, I, I, I just want to go back to something about unity and then we'll go through the two goals and we'll do the questions. In the 90th minute, when Gabriel did that block to make sure we had another clean sheet and surrounded by all the team, all his teammates, that shows the commitment there is to win something this season. Could we win the league? Could we win the Champions League? Absolutely. This is our best chance in both of these. Will we? Uh, well, no, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You know, but the commitment to keep that clean sheet 
is a and you were talking about levels. At, with 3 nil up, it's the 90th minute. If it had gone in, they're not going to win. We know that. We're still going to win it 3-1. But he did not want that ball to go anywhere near Raya. He blocked it and the teammates were high-fiving him and on him. Oh, my God, that made my heart melt. I was like, George Graham would be proud of you. Honestly, he would be, this defence would be George Graham's dream. And I've not said that in so many years and that was my one thing that for me I sort of gave Gabriel my man of the match with Havertz um and I as I, I looked at Cole and I went he, he said Havertz and I went mm, Gabriel Havertz I was like this but incredible I, I just absolutely love that and I would like to just look we've got Leando's Leo's goal was just exquisite Chris I mean, do you know what as well? Can I just, just I love gonna... that he got booed and he just stood there. And I love, and I'll tell you something else that the players do read social media and they do because both him do. and Rice at the end said, were, were you entertained? Because that was the dig about the City match. And I love a bit of that. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. absolutely. Fantastic. So Tross, Trossard has got, um, Bearing in mind, we see him almost as the 12th or 13th man. He's exactly. um, He's got like uh, eight goals and one assist this season. Like this is Premier League. So like yeah. there's talk. Last season, everyone was talking about Haaland and, you know, oh, Arsenal need a, uh, you know, in this season, Arsenal need like a 20, 30 goal a season striker. But when you've got everyone contributing, like I don't actually care. I don't need a yeah. Robin Van Persie to get us 30 goals in a season. Like what I I want to manage our risk, and the best way in which you manage your risk is you spread the goals around. Because if somebody yep. isn't scoring, another one yep. steps forward. We got seventy five goals in the Premier League this season. Like I don't care if not one single Arsenal player hits twenty goals, but I tell you what, if six or seven Arsenal players hit double figures in goals, hey, that works for me absolutely fine. And do you know the other thing about Trossard is when he went through on goal. I knew, like, I don't know about you guys, but as soon as he was through and you saw that he was through one-on-one -on -one against the keeper, I didn't believe for a second he wouldn't score. That man is absolutely ice cold when it Chris, comes to finishing. Chris you, make a, Chris, you make a good point because I think he's got 12 in all comps. And I think to myself, this is a guy that doesn't even start. I said he's the best finisher at the club. We can, and people can argue that for the cows come. He's the best finisher. If you want one player in that Arsenal team going one-on-one -on -one to score your goal, it's him. Mm. Ahead of Martinelli, Erdegaard, possibly. But for me, he's the best finisher at the club. Um, and to have that amount in, in terms of goal contributions and you're not even a starter, regular starter of the team, is outstanding to be in double figures. It's, it's, absolutely, it's, it's absolutely outstanding. Yeah. It would be very remiss of me to not mention the Jorginho pass to Havertz for the second goal, which I loved as well. I mean, if you had to choose a favourite one, um, it's hard because Leo's was just lovely. P the penalty was great and Havertz's his goal. I mean, we're 3-0 up and you're starting to think, OK, we got Bayern on Tuesday. You start to think towards that before the end of the game because you're 3-0 up. You're sort of thinking, right, what's happening on Tuesday? Let's let's just talk about, let's move on to Bayern quickly because we need to. Um, Bayern... Munich's director of sport, Max Erbel, on what gives him hope for the Arsenal clash. His response was, at the moment, I can't think of much. It's amazing. Like, you know what as well? Like, if you look at the subs that Arteta made, just going back to you talking about Bayern, Bukayo Saka came off just after the hour mark, as did Gabriel Jesus. Like, we are putting teams to the sword, getting a level of comfort that we are able to bring players off. And it gives you hope. That, like, we've all looked at April's fixtures and gone, this is going to be tough. There are going to be a lot of players that are going to be, you know, feeling the burn. But if we keep playing like this and we can bring players like Saka off on 60 minutes and Jesus off on 60 minutes and Zinchenko off on 72 minutes, you know, this rotation, Larky, it could work, right, Albert? What do you reckon? Yeah, I think with the Saka thing, quickly... Um... I look at it now, sort of thought about it like after the game and probably a little bit this morning, that I know people might say he didn't have a fantastic game. I think purely for him yesterday, that was about getting minutes because Mikel definitely wants to start him against Bayern. I think that's 100% behind that because, yes, you know, he trained before Luton, but obviously wasn't in the matchday squad. He's obviously trained before that. He's not had much since he left the England camp, really. Um but I think for me yesterday, that's about him getting minutes. So, and I said it 
don't be surprised as an Arsenal fan if he starts against Brighton, and he did. And I think he will start, obviously, against um, Bayern on Tuesday. Amanda, quickly about Gabriel, quickly. Um, amazing. Um, I love the stuff after the Man City game when he had to be separated from um, Haaland. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. He went away. He went away with Brazil a few camps ago. There was like a footage going around of him laying one dirty challenge on one of his Brazilian teammates. Just love him, man. And um, yeah, listen, him and Saliba to get two centre backs for that quality, uh, twenty-seven million euros each, and they're not even and they're, and they're not even in the late late twenties of their careers. It's, it's it's incredible, man. What they're going to do the next three or four years. And do you remember everyone having a go at Arteta for not bringing Saliba back earlier? <laughs> Yeah, you lot know. don't know what he does. That's all I'm going to say. Let's let's move on to Bayern. Um, I think the show's going to run over, but whoever wants to save us, please do, because we've got so many questions and it's so interesting. Bayern Munich come to us on Tuesday night. I think if Leverkusen win next weekend, they win the German League, yes. the Bundesliga. Yes. This means our granite will be lifting <laughs> the league trophy <laughs> in front imagine? of Harry Kane. And I mean, and then Harry Kane could go and win the uh, top goal scorer and he gets cannon. I mean, to be honest, could this be any better for any Gooners in the Bundesliga to watch Granite Xhaka, who fully deserves this, to win the league over Bayern Munich, where Harry Kane plays, who's going to win top goal scorer and gets a cannon for a trophy, Chris? It's mad, isn't it? It's, it's amazing. Crazy. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. You know what would be really, really good? Granite Xhaka um, lists the uh, beats uh, Harry Kane to a title. And then uh, uh, Jabby Alonso just says to him, do you know what? You can have the last few weeks off. Go and watch Arsenal lift the, lift the title. <laughs> that would be the real dream. If Granite Xhaka just takes the, far, the final few weeks of the season off and he just he gets himself to the Arsenal and, uh, and cheers us on as well. I'm, I'm getting a little bit over, uh, over, the, uh, over the top of myself. Here, I, know. <laughs> I never watched the Bundesliga, but I'll be watching next weekend. If I can watch it, I will be watching Granite, please God win it, because I love that boy. I really do, and it's so deserved. Right, Bayern Munich on Tuesday. Let's get to Bayern Munich. Let's get to a couple of predictions um, and then we'll go to the questions. Bayern Munich, Albert, Chris. No fans in the stadium from there, so mm. which is going to be very strange. I don't know if they've sold them to Arsenal fans. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Um, the whole ground's going to be us, which is going to be the most strangest thing we've probably ever heard. Um, and now we're coming off back of another win you know, our momentum's high, confidence is strong. And we play Bayern Munich, who we bloody owe, don't we, Albert? We bloody owe them. Uh, yeah, we do. Amanda, yeah, quick story. So, um, I, I didn't have... I was on a search for tickets. I, I went from zero for three games coming up to get in a complete hat-trick. So oh, I fantastic. Went to, went, so you are going to Luton, I went to Luton the other night. Yeah, I unbelievably got a ballot ticket for Bayern Munich. I saw a little Nat West sign come out of my account. I said, Flip it, no. And then I'm going to Chelsea as well. So, um, I went from going from having nothing to a hat trick, a right That's foot, so good. left foot. And fans crazy. like you yeah. deserve to get them as well. Oh, Absolutely, man, yeah. my, my bank balance is not feeling that. I'll be honest. No, but, um, I know, <laughs> but yeah, Bayern Munich, you really looking forward to it, Amanda. Now, not just got the ticket, but looking forward to the game anyway. Um, the fans thing's massive, huge. Um, so you're right. I don't know how they've, how Arsenal are going to distribute or I'm assuming there's going to be more tickets from the Arsenal fans that have gone. I, I don't know. I assume so. But listen, this, the Champions League's different, Amanda. Like, um, league form, as horrible as they've been, they've still got some good players, man. Um, Masiala, obviously Kane there. Afondo Davis, Kimmich, um, Goretzka. This Sane, the list goes on. But, um, I think with Arsenal, I think the most important thing, Amanda, is to go to Germany with a lead. We have to go to that ground with a lead. Whether it be 1-0, 2-1. Um, People go, no, we, got, we can't concede. As good as Arsenal's defence is, right, there are going to be games we are going to concede goals. Yeah, of course. Arsenal committed. But yeah. um, as long as we can go to the Allianz with a lead, um, that's the most important thing, man. Um, so for me, it's a 50-50, that game. Um, over two legs, I, I, I think it is a tight call. Um, but Arsenal are in a good vein of form, man. And with a cup competition, it's just the Champions League. Just, it's just it just bleeds different, Amanda. It's it's tough, man. We saw in the last round against Porto, um, that was a tough night, man. Um, but listen, the main thing for me, 
we, we do owe him for many, many years ago. I don't care how long ago it was. That's painful. You, you don't forget a, a defeat like that, back to back anyway. No. Um, so we're further on down the food chain. But listen, Arsenal fans, go there if you've got a ticket to go. Absolutely pound your lungs out. Um, it's going to be a really, really good night, man. Um, but yeah, most important thing, Amanda, get, go to the A-Lands with a lead somehow. That's interesting, isn't it, Chris? Because I think Tuesday night, where we're all going to be there, the the noise, I think, will be the loudest we've probably heard it. Not because Bayern aren't there, but because it's going to be rocking. We can feel we've got a chance to get through to the semi-final of the Champions League. I 100% agree with Albert. If we could go with even a 2-0 lead to, to the Allianz, We've got every, every chance and obviously everyone fit. Your thoughts on Tuesday night and then we'll come to some predictions. Yeah, so I do think that the, this defence, this Arsenal defence is such that I think if we take any, as long as we, as long as in our, our column there's a zero in terms of goals conceded, mm. I just feel like we could go to Bayern and just shut up shop there. So... I'm kind of thinking a nice 2 0 would be lovely because if we win 2 0, I'm already looking at can I see if I can, uh, what, what can I go to either a Manchester or, or Madrid? Uh, I'm already looking at that. If we can keep our goals against Colin zero, I've got, I've, I just I just fancy us right now. And it's I haven't felt like this for literally decades. So it's going to be really, really tough. Bayern Munich have got absolutely bugger all to play for in the league. And so yeah. they're going to just, pl- they're just going to plough everything into yeah. this. They are and going to Harry Kane, of course. Um, yeah. And they'll probably even, like they play uh, they play my German team, um, FC Kuhn, next Saturday. They'll probably completely rotate that team because they know the jig is up. They know that the game yeah. is done in, 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 the, in their domestic season. So for them, it's all about the Champions League. So they'll probably rotate their entire team and have a fresh team for that game um, in Munich. So we need to go there with something, definitely. And also what Albert's just said privately is that away goals, that's massive for us. I always like to play the the second leg at home. But now, because away goals don't count double... It's 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 a slightly different thing. Look, we're playing well away, we're playing well at home. We just got to keep it going. It's a massive match. So I've gone for two one. Albert, what's your score? Ooh, you know what? And I'm everyone in the chat room as well. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna put my Jules Graham heart and heart hat on. Um, one nil to the Arsenal. Right, you're going one nil, Chris. Two nil. I actually think mm, two nil. Arsenal. Line, yeah. Be well, we've all delicious. gone positive. What's about you lot in the chat room? And just before we move on, Chris, if you could get some pictures up from Ruth Beck. As I mentioned before, we're, met, we're sponsored by Ruth Beck Art. Please go and check out our Etsy shop out. Go on, and Ruth. If, if you look at that, I love that. All that North it. London Forever stuff, all the cards. She's the most amazing artist, not only drawing Arsenal stuff. She basically draws a lot of stuff in Highbury and Islington as well. You can commission her to do anything you want. Oh. She's got these badges. I love it. She's got fake tattoos. <laughs> go and support her. So it's ruthbeckart.com. She's got an Etsy shop. And if you go to her Etsy shop, and because you're part of the same old Arsenal podcast, if you type in thank you in capitals, you'll get 10% off. She's in the chat, isn't she? Go on. She oh, is. she is. Ruth, she is. she's oh, going to be too long Ruth. This woman's got so many Perfect ideas, Perfect timing, man. Ruth Beckhart. Oh, Perfect love timing. Um, we love you. Thank you for yeah, your dude. fantastic artwork. She's a top, top Guna girl as well. And let's all go and support her. Um, and it does look like in the chat room that you're all very positive as well. Um, Aditya Rajput has put Harry Kane might end up scoring a penalty. I'll give him a penalty if we're 5-0 up. I'll let him go 5-1. I'm all right with that. If that counts towards his tally of getting a cannon for the uh, top goal scorer, I'm I'm good with that. Um, So, Christopher, as I can see, we've got so many questions. And um, let's start. Let's start. Well, actually, before we do that, hello, Gandhi. Give me a shout out. Been listening to the podcast for a year. Ah, that's lovely. Um, one year, mate. Uh, thank you very much for listening. We do appreciate um, it, and we appreciate everyone in the chat and all the questions you put through as well. So, thank you very, very much. Chris, but, we right. have eight, we over we have over eight hundred people watching this at the moment. So, um, thank you to all of you, and please subscribe. Please hit the and also if there's over eight hundred of you, 
are you all going to go and press like and make our day and also press the bell and subscribe because we do shows constantly um, and we're liking these breakfast shows. It seems everyone around the globe can watch them as well, which is great. Um, and please, if you're listening on audio, we haven't forgotten you as well. Our, do our downloads have seemed to have gone through the roof as well. You're catching up on previous shows. Our numbers have gone up as well for that. So we're glad you're loving it. It is a year for us, Chris, isn't it? Just over a year now that the three of us have owned this channel. I was on it a year before um, on it when Craig owned it. And then we've taken it over and we've loved it. And we've got our core community that follow us everywhere. So we really appreciate all of you and all your tweets. So come come and follow us, follow us on Same Old Arsenal. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, we're on TikTok, same old Arsenal, for brilliant content on there. Um, yeah, thank you to you all, and let's go to the questions. Yes, all right, so we'll kick off with uh, with Carl, given that we've always been talking about, obviously, uh, the victory to yesterday, and then also we've been talking about the Bayern. Um, mm. Albert, Premier League or Champions League? Champions League. Interesting, Amanda. Yeah. Champions That's League. That's why, yeah. Albert. Champions League without any um, shadow of a doubt. Yeah, if, you, if you'd <laughs> ask me about... If you'd asked me about 10 years ago, I'd have said Premier League all day long. I think with the Champions League, with, with European success, should I say, because um, we've lost four finals, unfortunately. I, that That's one thing that always bothers me about Arsenal. It's our European record as a club. Um, and I think with the Champions League now, it just elevates your club to a different level. Um, Europe, world-wise, um, they attract more players. It just gives you a different kind of kudos, which you obviously will get from the league, but um yeah for me champions league interesting um amanda hold on i just want to tell you why it's champions league chris <laughs> i've seen everything else you all know that anfield i've seen cup doubles i've seen all everything I've, I, I was in the Stade de France that night when we lost in 2006 or whatever year i think it was 2006 i was devastated because it's so hard to reach a Champions League final, let alone exactly. win it. Exactly. And if we win this, we've won Massive. everything. Massive. Um, however, I don't see why we can't win both. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the question was you can have one. So let's play the game. <laughs> Champions on, League. Game. What about right. you, Chris? What about you? Um, I actually think I'm with Fiona. I actually would prefer the Premier League because I just think it's, the, it's a harder thing to actually win. Uh, the best teams are in the Premier League. And that feeling of being champions, like, and having to then when you reflect on the whole season, the slog of a whole season, I don't know. Um, you know, if if we get to the Champions League final, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna be absolutely desperate because it's around the corner from me at Wembley, and I would love to see us do it. But uh, and of course we want both, but I don't know. It's just I feel like the Premier League for it's me. Made right, for let's, us. It's at Wembley the final. It's made for us. Yeah, let's <laughs> move on. So, Sali Amanda Salib is on four yellows. Do we need to worry about him getting fifth? Doesn't they get wiped out soon? Is it yeah, next week? After 32 or? games, I think. So, what, where are we up to? I don't know. Uh, well, if Saliba's on four, I don't think it counts. Uh, Albert, do you know? I thought it goes up to 10 on 32. So, I'm not sure. I don't, I, he got booked yesterday. I don't know how he got yellow card for that. Actually. No, it goes to 10 after a certain next yeah. week. Yeah. So, if he, it won't be Bayern, will it? It'll be, we've got Villa Saturday night, haven't we? Is it Saturday or Sun, Sunday? It's moved to Sunday, Sunday, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. Um, so, I don't know because he got a silly booking yesterday. That was he a didn't crazy booking. He didn't that actually was... get booked for the foul. He got booked for his mouth. So, maybe we'll have to, someone's got to drag him away. See, Simon Lester saying five isn't a problem now, but I thought it was still one more game to go. I don't know. Anyway, we'll find out, I'm we'll not find concerned. Out. It's not a concern. Yeah. I think um, everyone listening in the chat, we've completely failed at that question because none of us have <laughs> <laughs> so We don't we'll, know. Let, let's move on. Let's move on. This is an interesting one, actually. Um, Carl said, uh, Albert, what do you reckon? How many points do we need uh, for our remaining seven games to win the league? Um, well, it started. I I said that for the last one to win the league, you got to hit. What's remaining left? So we've got um, we've got the maximum number of points we can get to is ninety two. We're on seventy one at the moment. There are seven games left, so there's twenty one games, twenty one points to play for, which means the maximum we can get, as I said, is ninety two. My gut feel is that I think we need ninety points. So I think it's we've got seven games left. I think we need to have six wins and a draw. I think that might do it, but. Don't know. Um, 
you know, I'd, I'd probably, I'd probably agree with you to be honest, with you because I don't think, I don't think either team will win all their games with any games left. Mm. I do. I think we need twenty-one. I think we need to win every single one. I think uh, I expect us to win our home games. No disrespect to the teams that we've got at home. Um, the away games are going to be tricky, but we need to definitely beat Tottenham and Manchester United. Definitely. So. So, so on that, so Amanda, you think it's 21. So on that, just leading into that next question from Simon, who do you worry the most out of those two teams? You think that if, so I guess the answer there for you would be Liverpool, because if you think mm. they're going to win all of them, you're more worried about Liverpool than you are City. Is that right? It, yeah, it's not that I'm less worried about City, but I'm more worried about Liverpool, but I'm confident in us. So I think we will stay above City. So it's Liverpool's the one for me. And I think we need 21 points. I, I, and at the moment, I can't see Liverpool dropping. We just have to hope there's one game in them that gets a draw. Yeah. And Albert. the goal Sorry. difference is massive at the moment. It is massive. We need to keep scoring. I think we're on 51 or 52. 50, 50 we are one, on 51. Yeah. 51. 51. We are... We are nine goals better off than Liverpool yeah, and 11 true. goals better off than Man City. Right. Uh, so if if Liverpool up. have to win today because we think they are going to, um, then let it just be 1-0. That, that's what I'm hoping. Um, oh, can Manchester United take points off Liverpool today? If they'd have beaten Chelsea in the week... I would have said there's a point, there's a the, the momentum that they'll be up, they'll be up for it anyway. But no, I can't see it. Albert? No, I think it's the opposite. I think that's um I think that probably works in our favour. The, the way they the way they lost that game against Chelsea was unbelievable. Um and they hate and, and that rival they hate each other. And oh God, the I worst know. thing that could the worst thing they'll want to happen is to get turned over by Liverpool Old Trafford. So I think as an Arsenal fan, the one positive you can hang on is the way United lost that game against Chelsea, and they won't want that. But they won't want that to happen again today. Mm. Interesting. I think yeah, I'm with you guys. I don't think that we are going to see anything from. I actually, I I don't think we're going to see anything from United today. I just think they've got too many injuries. I think they've got too many problems, and I'd love to see it, but. I'm not sure. Uh, let's pick another question. Um, Albert, if fit, would you play Timber before the end of the season? That's Absolutely not. I didn't think he'd feature again this season at all. The injury was too serious. Um, we save him for next season. The, the, that simple. Amanda? It does depend. If the team stays as it is now fit, then I agree with Albert. Obviously, if not, then he may have to. Um, isn't that a wonderful position to be in? that we're even debating whether we should play him or not. Because six months ago, we were desperate to get him back. Yeah. I'll be, yeah, shocked. Um, I'll be shocked if he plays this season, Chris, I'll be honest. The thing is as well, is we've just been talking about the fact that we've got such great squad depth. We've just been talking about our bench. Like, we don't need to risk anything with no, Tim Lott. Let's him. just have him yeah. ready. You know, let him be part of the team. You know, maybe if... You know, maybe if uh, hopefully United and uh, can do us some favours. I don't think they will, but if United did us some favours today, uh, if if City can drop some points, maybe we can uh, you know have a victory tour against Everton at home, uh, where we've already won the league with one game to go. Maybe, uh, maybe, uh, maybe we can do that. But um, just link to that, and probably because we've had lots of questions in the chat about party, we've sort of answered that, and about like uh, actually we'll we'll do um, who lineups for. Uh, lineups for Tuesday because that was one of the Ooh. questions that we've got before the inevitable question uh, Fiona Scott has asked which I will put up but I'm probably not going to answer but before that uh, Amanda midfield on Tuesday but actually give us your 1 to 11 Ooh. I think it picks itself for me if Martinelli is 90 minutes fit he would come in for me over Jesus yeah. Uh, Jorginho and Rice, uh, Erdegaard, Saka, it, it just picks it and the, and the back four. I'd have Kivio um, in the left back for sure. Um, and as, as you know, it picks itself. Martinelli or Jesus? It, it oh, depends who's fit. No, Amanda's, uh, Amanda's bottle, we, we touched on it earlier. I think you, you, you won't see too many, you won't see massive, you won't see big changes. It'll literally be one or two tweaks. Um, I think if Martinelli got a little bit more time yesterday, didn't he? So, I think that's the only call come Tuesday, whether he starts or Jesus. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, I think 
I think up running up running up against Kimmich, um, I've got a feeling that Martinelli might start, but I think it should be Havertz. So, uh, Jesus loves the he, he absolutely loves the uh, Champions League. Oh, yeah, game, yeah, so. good point. But then I'd bring still, him on as a superstar. If, you, yeah, could, you could do it either way, couldn't you? Start Nelly and see how he goes. But we, yeah. we, I think Martinelli is crucial. We did miss him when he wasn't there the last few games. Pace. And I think, Pace. yeah, the, the crucial on that left side is that we need to get him fit. If he's not fit, then start Jesus and bring him on. But listen, yeah. Mikel does. So I've got no arguments about that. Yeah. And let's do this with the final sort of wrap up um, of the day. Uh, the inevitable question, which seems to come in every single week. Oh, and I thought that'd be from Carl. Fiona's got on exactly, the uh, Carl bandwagon. Exactly. Fiona, very naughty Fiona uh, asking us that question. But Albert? Do you think you know, Arsenal you, will win the league? You know what it is. Um, I at the start of the season. I, I came on. Yeah, we came on here. I see you asked predictions. I said we'd finish. We finish second. Sort of going I've through got the season. It written down here, yeah, yeah. Albert. You sort said of, City, Arsenal, Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think going through the sort of the season, Chris. I'm like, Arsenal will get close, but I think they'll still finish short. And if you're mm. asking me the question now, I think it's. I really think it's a toss up. I'm not sure. Really not sure. Yeah, Amanda. <laughs> you look at my prediction. I went City, Arsenal, United, United thirds. That's how much I know about football. And Liverpool fourth. Not going to happen. Sorry. Do you think? No, I'm not answering that. How dare you even ask me that? <laughs> Ridiculous thing to ask. I'm not um, answering. I, Just take I'm my answer. Liverpool back. start dropping points and we keep winning, then ask me again. <laughs> You know what? Like, I'm not willing to 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 go there just yet. No, not yet. But that game yesterday, like. It really made me sit up and take notice because, like, Brighton's a tough place to go. Good, like we good said, performance. Good it's a performance, tough place yeah. to go. Yeah. We've absolutely smashed them. We've added to our goal difference. We look imperious defensively, like absolutely crazy. Sam Dean um, has put something in the Telegraph today. Arsenal's defensive, this was on Twitter, Arsenal's defensive record in 2024 is ridiculous. Mm. Their expected goals over the last 11 games is 4.98. The crazy. next best record is Man City, and their expected goals against is 12.28. Like, we are, like, we are just shutting up shop. And yesterday, I was really nervous about it, and now I'm like... Chris, 31 points yeah. out of 33. That's in, that's that's standard. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. But yes. Um we've got one last question, I think, from Cole, which is quite interesting. We can finish. It says the players have improved from last season, but how important is Arteta's growth from last season? What is his ceiling, Albert? <clears throat> um Well, he's learning, isn't he? That's the thing, isn't it? Um a year's a long time in football, isn't it? So listen, I think for me, um, people talk about him getting his players. I, I, I get it, but you still got to coach him, haven't you? Um, I think he has shown a little bit more adaptability this season. It's, uh, for me, it's the, yes, managers have elements of stubbornness about them. Who doesn't as a top manager? Um, but um, he is learning, and you know what? The, he's, the players, we talk about player management and um, looking after your players and coaching and and all the rest of it, but if, if you know, what I mean, the players are playing for a minute, hundred percent. Um, we was having many conversations not too long ago. Oh, the players, is he lost the dressing room and all this? He ain't lost the dressing room, man. Trust me. Um, you don't do what we done last season for a portion of time, and what's happened this season. And bear in mind, Chris, right? We went for a period in the season where we didn't. We had what one win in seven. Mm. weren't that long ago. We weren't that long ago. There's some detractors, but time moves quickly in football. But listen, if we can. For a manager in his first job, if he can get us over the line winning the Premier League title, amazing achievement, potentially. I like what Gentile said. Arteta has Fergie potential, Chris. I agree. Yep. yep. And again, it goes back to the longevity thing. Like, until it's happened, you can't say, you can't really talk about yeah. it until it's happened. Um, but once that does happen, once the first big one, once the first big one happens, whether it's Premier League, whether it's Champions League, I feel like the sky's the limit. I think it could be. My, I'm really hoping that this is just kind of like a we're just about to get into a legacy period, like what we had with the early 2000s or late 90s, early 2000s with Wenger, where we were just competing every year. We might not win the league every year, but we'd be in the question. And you know, we'd we'd won we won 98, we won 2002, we won 2004. Like every odd year, every every even year, we were 
we were challenging or winning stuff. And that's where I feel like we could get to. We just got to get over that line for the first time. Absolutely. Wow. What a show, boys, and everyone in the chat room. Thank you so much for your questions. Thank you for being with us on this lovely Sunday morning. Um, we're top of the league. We're having a great time. Enjoy every moment. Make sure that place is rocking on Tuesday night. Um, Albert, tell everyone where they can find you and your wonderful, wonderful content. <laughs> Thank you for the plug. Yes, Albert JTV. I've done a, I've done a, I've done a recent Life Stories series uh, with Mr. James Green, fellow gooner. So um, check that out, people, on the audio and the video platform. <laughs> Love him, man. He's a great, great guy, man. Um, but yeah, check that out on Albert JTV. You'll find me anywhere on Instagram and on Twitter. Um, lovely. Please go and follow Albert. He's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Love having him. I love you have being on this show, my lovely. Oh, Christopher, thanks. how can they find you? Because I don't think everyone realises that you write a blog every day. Come on, I do, Chris, yes. Come on. I've got to actually write. I haven't written this one because uh, for today, so I'm going to do that in a second. Do you but, write uh, one yeah. every single day? Yes, wow. I have. God knows how many millions of words I've written um, in the last sort of 15 years. But yeah, oh, so it's suburbangooners.com uh, or just on the Twitter. Um, I've actually only, I've just joined Instagram for the first time in bloody ages. Yes. So, really? But I, I, only post, I only post stuff from within the ground. So I'll just post pictures of within the stadium and bits. But oh, yeah, I did wonder, I did see some there. things the other day. And thank you to all your lovely comments as well. Go and check out Christopher's blog. If you oh, like Chris. listening to what he says, suburbangooners.com. Com. Is that what it is? That's it. Right. Um, we won't be back post-game against Bayern Munich because it will be too late. I don't know when we're back again, but you don't need to worry if you've subscribed and pressed your bell, will you? You will all know when our next show is. <clears throat> we'll all be at the um, Villa game uh, probably yes. next Sunday night, actually. Um, what time is the kickoff? Is it 4 30, half? I think. 4 30. Um, mm. Okay, fine. So we might go post game next Sunday evening. We'll have to wait and see. Albert, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks to everyone in the chat room. My podcast brother, you've been brilliant. Um, thank you for doing the admin. To everyone in the chat room, this is it. The business end of the season. Yes, yeah, it is. Enjoy every moment. Bring your dinner. And as Red Action says, bring your schnitzel on Tuesday night. Bring everything. Get behind the boys. Not that I need to even say that because I know you all will. It's going to be an incredible, incredible night. We're going to beat Bayern. Let's just hold on to that. We're going to beat Bayern. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, people. We will see you very soon. And thank you for always supporting us. And always Arsenal. Bye, everyone.